Hey everybody, DM Jim here, and welcome to a new episode of the Tabletop Engineer. I'm going to give a special shout out to this episode to one of my subscribers, Rob Dabs. Rob, I am going to be doing a goblin build, and you nailed it. Rob suggested a war wagon. That got me thinking. And so in this episode, I'm going to show you how I made the goblin war wagon complete with troll puller. Let's get to the work table, and I'll show you how I made this. I began the battle wagon by first deciding on the base size. I used a piece of wood sort of to frame everything. And then I started just gluing together skewers to make the very bottom. After the base was made, I cut up a bunch of chipboard to form the baseboards. This is actually pretty much most of what these projects involve is just gluing toothpicks and skewers in various angles and then covering them with chipboard and just cutting more chipboard and gluing more chipboard and uh, the only difference is some of the widths or lengths of the chipboard change. Now here I was intending to put a uh, hole in the center to allow a ladder. That actually went away as the uh, structure got bigger but um, Initially, I was going to put a ladder running all the way from the base up to the top, but I uh, had a different idea as it started to develop. Here you can see I'm taking skewers and I'm gluing them at a very unique angle, sort of to make a box, but the box sort of has flared sides. The, each piece angles outward, like forward and to the left or right, so it has not, it doesn't have a rectangular boxy look. It's more of like a, um, I don't know, like an upside down stool, I guess. Right here is a better idea of the angle of those skewers. Then I started making the floors. Uh, this thing has uh, four floors, if you count the very top level. And I'm going to put windows and platforms in various uh, levels that will be where the goblins would be firing weapons out of. Uh, the windows would be like bows and arrows, and the platforms would be, say, ballistas or catapults or something like that. Again, just a lot more cutting of chipboard and basically once you do one side you just flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other. Um, everything on the battle wagon is uh, symmetrical from left to right. The only difference is on the front there is a single large window on the front where the goblins would yell out to the troll uh, left or right you know, for steering purposes. And then on the back, there are more windows uh, for firing. Okay, here you can see that I'm starting on the top level. The top level, I originally intended for it to be removable. I used skewers to create the framework and then covered everything with chipboard. Eventually what happened was I ended up, the, uh, the top is actually held um, by pressure of four skewers that you'll see later on that go down into those openings and uh, they angle outward and so they hold the top in place. Now if I needed to get the top off, I could do it but um, it's really intended to stay put. I thought I might put some lights uh, at, at some time inside, but I, I got rid of that idea. 
Now here I'm cutting four circles that will be the wheels. I basically punched a hole in the center with a knife and then a pin enlarged it. Then I stuck a dowel through. I did this four times and then I covered each wheel with strips of chipboard to simulate, you know, the wheels were made out of wood like you can see here. Not tedious at all, but I uh, didn't want to include all four of them. Just cover one and then cut around it in a circle and then I glued toothpicks to make a spike like it was holding the um, the uh, what do you call it the axle in place once the wheel was made I cut a bunch of little pieces of chipboard and made the wheel thicker I went all the way around glued the four wheels on the bottom as you can see here next I started painting the troll which is going to be pulling the wagon uh, just basically a, a green. I didn't. I wasn't happy with the green because he looked too much like a certain uh, Marvel hero. So I uh, mixed it up again later with a much darker, darker green. Uh, sort of a gross looking green and hit it all again. And then I painted the armor with the silver. I went out and took the uh, wagon and black bombed it with some spray paint. And then I brought it in and with some burnt umber here. Actually, I used burnt sienna. Excuse me. Burnt sienna. I covered every surface with the burnt sienna once and then I went back over it again with a second coat to give it sort of a brighter wood orangey look. And once I once that dried, I went over the entire wagon with a very light coat. Eh, you could argue a heavy coat, but a light coat of very light gray to give the wood sort of an aged sun-dried look as you can see right here. I uh, tipped all of the spikes with bright red, painted some graffiti on the various sides. And then I painted four skewers black and then weathered them. They go down into the body as you can see here and then I used some string to sort of hold them in place with tension. And then I went over each of the strings with a brown tone wash to give the strings a weathered look. That's it. I say that's it, but it took about seven or eight hours, but you can totally do this. It's just a lot of cutting of chipboard into uh, beams to glue on. Uh, you'll need some skewers and things like that. And be careful. This thing has a lot of sharp points on it. I did wear eye protection when I was making this, but I have got more uh, splinter sized holes in my hands from jabbing myself as I worked on this thing. I uh, got more jabs than I did uh, hot glue burns. So just be careful. Now, if you do attempt something like this, I would love to see your result. Um, the battle wagon was very fun to make. Um, I'm very proud of the wheels. The wheels turned out great. I like my little troll puller here. You could get rid of this guy and maybe put on some pushers in the back where the goblins would push this or maybe put it in the front. It's up to you. It's unfortunate that this is not going to get put with my other goblin terrain over there. You want to know why? Because I'm going to give this away. Right now, I have a new Patreon called patreon.com slash the tabletop engineer. Right now, what I am doing is I'm not going to discontinue the Friday videos. I will still do the Friday crafting videos, but the Patreon allows me to do a lot more. I'm doing uh, more advanced projects. I'm doing live streams over there with, with chat features where you can talk to me as I'm making things. I do. I upload a lot of PDFs that are resources for GMs and players. Um, we're going to do some, some private discussions with patrons about upcoming projects and things like that. And then of course, starting in January, patrons will always get to see my, my newest videos early. It's only a dollar a month. And what it's allowing me to do is basically focus full time on creating stuff like this and written content for you guys, for the world. I share it out there. If you sign up, uh, normally the giveaways are only for the $5 and up patrons, but this is for everybody. I'm going to do a live giveaway on about December 30th or December 31st. So it's just about a month away. Uh, I'm going to draw. I'll explain how I'll do it in the, in the live stream. 
But if you are a patron, it doesn't matter where you live, I will ship this there. So go over there and check out what I've got. Uh, the Patreon f the account is free for November, but starting on December 1st, it's becoming patron-only content. There will still be, always be free content for anyone who comes to the to the uh, Patreon, but most of it's going to be exclusive to my Patreon supporters. So I really hope you'll give consideration into supporting me, just a dollar a month, and uh, you'll be eligible for things like this. Please come over to the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page and join. Uh, we have a lot of discussions over there. I sometimes do live videos there, although I'm moving them mostly over to Crowdcast, which is the Patreon thing. People share their stuff. I share my stuff. Uh, so a lot of times I post things that don't make it into the videos. So come over there and join us. And then finally, the last thing I want to remind you about is uh, Bexham's Bazaar is uh, the 12th issue of the gaming magazine is coming out on December 1st. 12 issues done. And I'm also going to be continuing the magazine over into 2020. So if you're interested in a gaming magazine with lots of GM resources and player resources like props and mini adventures and stuff like that, come over to patreon.com slash Bexham's Bazaar. Again, all this information will be in the description below so you can, uh, you can check it out at your leisure. All right. I hope you like this. I hope you'll give it a shot. But if you don't want to give it a shot, come sign up on the Patreon and you might win this. Again, I'll do the drawing on or around December 30th, 30th or 31st, but I'll give plenty of announcements about the live uh, giveaway. You don't have to be watching the live giveaway to win. I will pick the name and I will ship it wherever you happen to be. So give it a shot, $1 a month, okay? All right, that's it. I'll see you next week with a new craft. This is DM Jim. Take care.